an iconic photo from April 13th, 1945. An overjoyed woman holding a little girl's hand as they walk towards U.S. soldiers away from a Nazi train they'd just been on. It's one of those things when you, when you think about photographs of trains and associate them with the Holocaust, you don't think about people being liberated. You think the exact opposite, people going to their deaths in the cattle cars, etc. This is completely the opposite. U.S. soldiers came across the train as they were on their way to a battle in Germany. Matthew Roselle first learned about the photo when he was interviewing a U.S. soldier as part of an oral history project with his New York State High School students. The soldier was part of the effort to help the thousands of Jews who were on that train. So we have second generation, we have third generation, as Michael alluded to, thousands, tens of thousands of people who just wouldn't be alive if it hadn't been for that moment when the American soldiers stopped and cared. So that's our message to, to the world. Roselle went on to write a book, A Train Near Magdeburg, the city the soldiers were going to. No for the past eight life. years, Central Ohio Emmy Award winning director Mike Edwards has been working with Roselle on a documentary. Um, there's no other photograph like it in all the Holocaust. Um, it's one of the most powerful photographs considered of the 20th century. And it was hidden in a shoebox of a soldier's closet for 65 years, but because Matt decided to teach. It came to light. It's about what happened on that day nearly 80 years ago and the months following. It also has reunifications between survivors from the train and those who saved them. 2,500 Jews were on it. Edwards and Roselle just got back from Israel where they interviewed more survivors. One was a 95-year-old woman, the last remaining living survivor of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. She was on the train. And she looked at me and she said, I'm not sure who's going to be left to tell the story. And I reached out and I grabbed her hand and I said, we will. We'll tell it. So that's what keeps us going. It's not a happy ending story. I mean, it is, <laughs> but it's not. For every one of the 2,500 people liberated on that day, there was another 2,500 people who were murdered in the four and a half years of the Holocaust in Europe. And we have to keep that in mind because, you know, you say never again, but what does that really mean? People don't know the story. People don't know the story of the Holocaust. We need to educate people. And that's the whole point of what Michael and I are trying to do with this, this project.